Hey folks, before I start the results video, I'd like to touch on what happened at the Hall of Fame ceremony. There was an altercation involving Bret Hart's speech. Some asshat, whose name I will not be mentioning, rushed the ring and tackled Bret Hart. Security and other superstars subdued the idiot and escorted him out of the arena. It was reported he was arrested for assault and disorderly conduct. Big props to Scott Dawson who got the last shot in on him. Bret Hart is doing well and humorously continued his speech. And a special F you goes to the schmuck who tried to make all of this about him. With all that said, let's continue on to WrestleMania. What's up, folks? It's your buddy Phil Ready Tank. We're going to be doing results for WrestleMania 35. We started off with the kickoff show, Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese for the Cruiserweight Championship. This is an awesome match. There was a lot of speed from both Nice and Murphy. There was a whole bunch of near falls throughout this whole match. After a Murphy's Law and a two count, Tony Nese got the running Nice on Murphy to get the pin and is now the new Cruiserweight Champion. We then have the Women's Battle Royal. Pretty much everybody just walks out to the ring except for Naomi and Asuka. They get their own entrance. We have Lana, Mickey James, Ember Moon, The Riot Squad, Dana Brooke, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Zelina Vega, Candice LeRae, Kyrie Sane, and Carmella. I'm sure I'm missing a few of them, but that's what I saw at least. Towards the end of it, the final four was Carmella, Sonya Deville, Asuka, and Sarah Logan. Asuka eliminates Sonya Deville, Sarah Logan eliminates Asuka, and Carmella super kicks Sarah Logan to win. This was alright, I mean there really wasn't much in the way of build up for it, let alone you really don't see much in the way of momentum coming across after these matches. We then have The Revival versus Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. This will be for the Raw Tag Team Championships. This was a good match with a pretty long runtime. The Revival had most of the offense to this match. Hawkins tries to rally, taking the Revival down. After a Scott Dawson brain buster, Kurt Hawkins plays dead. Dawson tries to pick up Hawkins. Hawkins rolls him up. He gets the pin. So Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins are our new Raw Tag Team Champions. And most importantly, Hawkins beat his 269 losing streak. We then go to the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Pretty much the only people we have to watch out of this is Colin Yost, Michael Che, and Braun Strowman. Pretty much everybody else is just fodder. Right at the start of the Battle Royal, Yost and Che bitch out and roll up underneath the ring. They hide there till the end of the match where the Hardys are trying to eliminate Braun Strowman. They come running out trying to help. Braun Strowman eliminates the Hardys. Colin Yost gets on the microphone and says he brought his therapist. The therapist comes in. He gets thrown around by Strowman. Michael Che tried to be smart and get out of the ring himself. Braun Strowman helps him out. And then Braun Strowman picks up Yost and throws him out of the ring. Once again. Eh. So Braun Strowman is the winner. He goes out to the ringside and celebrates holding up the Andre the Giant trophy. We then come to the main card. Alexa Bliss comes out and she says that she can do anything tonight. She snaps her fingers and Hulk Hogan comes out. Hogan says he's glad to be back. Hypes up WrestleMania. And then Alexa Bliss and Hulk Hogan start posing. While they're doing this, Paul Heyman comes storming out right out to the ring. Heyman says if we're not going to do this in the main event, we might as well get it done now. So it looks like we're going to be getting the trash out early. So we have Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. Before Rollins can get into the ring, Brock Lesnar attacks him. He hits him with an F5. He throws him all over ringside. This goes on for several minutes. Finally, we get him back in the ring and we start our match. Lesnar continues to beat down. He takes Rollins to Suplex City. He sets up from an F5, but Seth Rollins gets out of it. This knocks the referee out for a second. Rollins takes Lesnar to Dick Kick City, hits him with a stomp three times, and pins Brock Lesnar to rid the WWE of the reigning, defending, undisputed, part-time champion. We then have AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. This match had a kind of a mixed reaction, both with myself and the crowd. That being said, though, this was a very physical match. Styles and Orton were pummeling the hell out of each other. Styles was able to kick out of an RKO. While Orton was outside of the ring, Styles hit the phenomenal forearm, got Orton back into the ring, was able to counter another RKO, hits Orton with another phenomenal forearm, and got the pin. This was an okay match. Like I said, it kind of had mixed reactions. We then had another Lacey Evans drive-by. I'm pretty sure it's official now. She is now the new Emelina of the WWE. Then we had the Fatal 4-Way for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. The Usos versus The Bar versus Nakamura and Rusev versus Ricochet and Aleister Black. This was a decent match. There was one segment where Cesaro had Ricochet in the swing and Sheamus was giving the 10 bells to practically everybody else. After the usual chaos that happens with these matches, the Usos hit the double Us on Sheamus to retain their titles. We then had The Miz versus Shane McMahon in a Falls Count Anywhere match. This is a pretty good match. The Miz and McMahon were hitting each other with pretty much anything that wasn't nailed down. The Miz's dad gets involved and ends up paying for it. The fight spills out into the crowd. They fight up onto some scaffolding and The Miz suplexes Shane McMahon off the scaffolding. The referee runs up and Shane is covering The Miz. The rev counts him out as the pin. So that was a real big shock. I was actually thinking The Miz was winning it. But alas, Shane McMahon got it. 
We then have a fatal four-way for the Women's Tag Championships. Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Nia Jax and Tamina versus Natalia and Beth Phoenix versus the Iconics. This is an okay match, like I said before, with these multi-team matches, all hell breaks loose. After a ton of near falls, Beth Phoenix hit the glam slam on Bailey. Peyton Royce knocks Beth Phoenix out of the ring, and Billy Kay, who got herself tagged in, I must have missed that one, covers Bailey for the pin, and now the Iconics are now the new women's tag champions. We then have Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship. Both the New Day and Rowan are at ringside. This is a pretty well mixed match for offense. They gave this match a lot of time. Kofi Kingston hit the trouble in paradise and pins Daniel Bryan to win the WWE title. The New Day celebrate in the ring and Big E reveals the proper WWE title, discarding the hemp title at the same time. Kofi's kids come in to celebrate and the New Day reveal new WWE t-shirts with the New Day. Like I said, this was a really good match. Then we have Rey Mysterio versus Samoa Joe for the United States title. This is a very quick match. If you blinked, you missed it. After a short bit of offense, Samoa Joe gets the coquina clutch on Mysterio and knocks Mysterio out. We then have Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. McIntyre was beating down on Reigns for pretty much most of this match. McIntyre tries to go for the dirty deeds and fails. He slaps Roman Reigns and then Roman goes full on Hulk Hogan. He hits McIntyre with a Superman punch and a spear and gets the pin. So after this, pretty much let's slam the brakes on everything because we got Elias coming out. He shows up on the screen playing drums, then once again playing the piano, and now he's in the ring and has a threesome with himself. Giggity, giggity. He's then interrupted by a video package of Babe Ruth calling a shot, and then John Cena comes out in his old thugonomics getup. He gets in the ring, lays down a rap, kind of hinting on being a heel, runs down Elias, he then knocks down Elias, giving him a five knuckle shuffle and an FU, and walks away. We then have Batista versus Triple H in a no-holds-barred match. If Triple H loses, he ends his career. Batista comes out with a limo and security. Eh? Triple H comes out in a Mad Max-esque rat rod. When they get down to the bottom of the ramp, the driver is sitting there revving the engine, and I think pretty much everybody within five feet of him is deaf now. As soon as the match starts, it gets physical quick. Triple H hit Batista with a toolbox, grabs a chain, starts wailing away on him, clamps his fingers in a set of channel locks, plants a chair on Batista's chest, takes a pair of needle nose pliers and pulls out his nose ring. Batista rallies back, dropping Triple H onto a table, tries to go for a Batista bomb, but Triple H reverses it into a back body drop onto the announcer's table, trips Spears Batista into a table, gets him back into the ring, grabs old trusty sledgehammer, gets back into the ring and eats a spear. Batista hit the Batista bomb onto some steps, goes for a pin, gets a two count, Ric Flair comes out, he hands Triple H another sledgehammer, runs to the other side of the ring, distracts Batista, which allows Triple H to hit him with the sledgehammer, nails the pedigree, and pins Batista. This is a good match, but I think it was probably about 10 minutes too long. Then we had the match we were all waiting for, Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. This is an M match. It had a lot of cool spots in it, however, but Baron Corbin hit the end of days and pins Kurt Angle. After the match, Kurt Angle gets onto the microphone, thanks everybody for the past 20 years, and prompts everybody to chant, you suck, to his music. So thank you, Kurt Angle, for 20 amazing years. We then have Bobby Lashley versus Demon Balor for the Intercontinental Championship. Leo rushes at ringside, and it kind of looks like Bobby Lashley is wearing contacts. This is an incredible match, including one spot where Finn Balor gets speared through the ropes by Bobby Lashley, and then Finn Balor giving a power bomb to Lashley as well. Finn Balor hit the coup de grace, gets the pin, is now the new Intercontinental Champion. Alexa Bliss comes out and announces that they have a new attendance record for MetLife Stadium. And then R-Truth and Carmella come out for a very extended 7 second dance break. We then come to our main event, Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch in a winner take all for the SmackDown and Raw Women's Championship. Charlotte Flair arrives by helicopter and Ronda Rousey is played in by Joan Jett. This is yet another very physical match with a ton of near falls and a lot of close submissions. One spot where Becky Lynch pulls out a table. Charlotte Flair attacks her, lays her onto the table, but is quickly fought off by Lynch. Charlotte Flair spears both Lynch and Rousey. Rousey starts to set up the Piper's Pit on Lynch. She counters, gets Rousey's shoulders onto the mat, and gets the pin, and is now the new SmackDown and Raw Women's Champion. Fireworks go off, the crowd cheers, Becky Lynch celebrates in the ring with both titles as we end this year's WrestleMania. For the most part, this was pretty good. I liked it. It was a good pay-per-view. There were a couple of down spots. There were a couple of matches that weren't eh, that weren't all that great. But for the most part, it was good. I liked it. It was a lot of cool matches tonight. It ran long. I think including the pre-show, I think I was sitting there for about seven and a half hours. 
God help me when they come to Tampa Bay next year. I'll probably be doing the results show pretty much well into the next day. But that'll do it for the results for WrestleMania 35. Leave a comment down below what you thought of this pay-per-view, what you thought of this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Roadie. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.